That was Theresa May. Joining us here in the studio is Joanna Williams, the author of Women vs. Feminism, Why We All Need Liberating from the Gender Wars. Jess Phillips, who as chair of the Women's Parliamentary Labour Party, has handled some of the complaints in the party. Welcome to the studio. Do you think this has been well handled and handled in the correct way? No, I don't. I think there are a number of problems with the way it's been handled so far. Uh, perhaps most significant of all, a story which has uh, dropped from the news with some speed is the tragic suicide of the um, uh, Welsh Labour MP, Carl Sargent. So I think we've got the trappings of a witch hunt, um, which is bad for men, but I think it's actually terrible for women, this idea that we're going to lump together everything from rape accusations, serious sexual assault allegations, to knee touching, now text messages, all being conflated together. I think it trivialises some of the serious crimes that have had an impact upon women's lives and it creates a witch hunt atmosphere for the men accused. What do you say to that, Jess Phillips? I don't know who's lumping those things together other than people who wish to call it a witch hunt. Uh, I don't think it's a witch hunt at all. I think that, like any place of work, Parliament has to live by the same rules and people should feel safe and comfortable and power and patronage that exists in Parliament should never ever be able to be used to exploit whether that is sexual harassment or people's sexual urges because uh, it's to me fundamentally about the power imbalance that exists in there and it's by no means only women I have dealt with complaints from men as well. Right, do you accept that? No, I think it's very disingenuous to say that we don't know who's lumping all of these things together because we've had spreadsheets going around Parliament um, compiled through WhatsApp groups that have then formed the front page of news stories um, that have focused on everything from knee touching to serious accusations of rape. So I think these things are clearly being lumped together. And the argument is that all of these things are on a continuum. Well, by that logic, every aspect of human interaction from saying hello to someone, talking to someone, to rape and murder are all on continuums of human behaviour. But the argument that women are completely powerless, uh, sexual harassment does happen, but the idea that women can't turn around and say, please, could you take your hand off my knee, throw a cup of coffee, over them, walk away. These are women in Parliament we're talking about, I think is frankly ridiculous and insulting to women. Right. Why can't people do that? Or women, I should say. Well, they absolutely can, but I suppose the difference between myself and yourself is that I recognise that not all women are exactly the same. And some women may feel completely able to. And all power to their elbows. I would live tweet it if somebody touched me. However, there are lots and lots of young people, and I know because I work in Parliament, there are lots and lots of young women who work there and young men who are there to try and get on in life and feel that they have to be quiet about certain things. And this isn't just a problem in Parliament. I this is this absolutely is, everywhere. This is a very patronising and... argument that some women are capable of dealing with sexual harassment, but other women are not. Except I mean, what about the case if it's a young woman who is going for a job in the House of mm -hmm. Parliament and the person who is interviewing her then sends her sexting, sexting as it's called, text afterwards? Is, is she in a position to tell that man easily to literally go away? Actually today, yes. But the fact is that there are young women in the country who are at risk of sexual harassment. Uh, let's talk about the young girls in Rochdale, in Oxford, in Newcastle. And when Sarah Champion I from thought the we Labour Party, them all together. when Sarah Champion from the <laughs> Labour Party stood up and tried to draw attention to what was happening to these girls, they're obviously the wrong kind of victim. They don't make front page news it, stories. It, it's amazing because I care about all victims. I'm somebody who has set up long before it was trendy for the right-wingers to talk about Rochdale, I actually set up services for child victims of sexual exploitation all across the Midlands. And it is absolutely phenomenal that you are now lumping those things in together, exactly as you have claimed not to be doing, which I find to be completely disingenuous. The but point the, is, though, anyone who is going to stand there and say that I... I don't care about child sexual exploitation, but I do care about knee touching is, I'm afraid to say, lying. Aren't all these things a matter of importance, Joanna? You recently uh, wrote that any woman who publicly accuses someone of sexual harassment without details or evidence is not only believed but celebrated. Can you give me examples, though, where they haven't had details or evidence? 
Oh, well, you, uh, these are not tested in courts of law. That's the point. I mean, anybody, it seems, can turn around and say someone touched my knee 10 years ago. And, and to, if you have a serious accusation of rape or sexual assault, it needs to go to a court of law. I mean, you have somebody who's tragically committed suicide without even knowing what the allegations were against him. I mean, how can that be right in 2017 that somebody is fired from their job without even knowing what they stand accused? Of. Should people be told in full what it is they're accused of? Some people might say, look, they know. They know what they're being accused of, even if it hasn't been publicly explained. But if we look at the uh, ongoing investigations, including the Cabinet Minister, um, Damien Green, um, Charlie Elphick also said they don't know the full nature of their allegations. Is that the correct way to deal with it? Well, I'm not an expert in this, no, and no, I sure. wonder whether... That it may be that in certain cases where, uh, where a, an alleged event is so serious that it's been referred to the police, it may be that the police then say that no further information can be supplied uh, to the alleged uh, perpetrator. But, but it's certainly in the ideal world, as an employer, you would hope that the accusations were shared in full. But as I say, it may be that the police actually prevents that. And, and you know, we have to respect the police mm. that they do need to be able to do their jobs properly. It isn't there a difference between what is known as locker room talk because of Donald Trump and sexual banter and serious sexual harassment and that there is a risk of minimising what most people would think is the more serious accusation from, as you say, the day-to-day -day power play? I, I, I mean, I think that the people who are aiming to minimise both things are the people who are, 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 are essentially trying to lump those two things together. Now, I, I don't think that being upset that young women feel that they cannot speak up where they're employed, that many Many of them leave their jobs because they just don't know what to do about it. Is It is, to be honest, about power. Sexual violence is not about sexual urges. Sexual harassment isn't about sexual urges. It is about having power over somebody but and it exists in difficult power relationships. And as somebody who is an expert on things, that anything that the if there is a going to be a police investigation, which I don't know whether there is in, in Charlie Elphick's case, if the party were to speak to him, they could then have to be called to be giving evidence in Very court brief. in that case. It, on the subject of power, we need to remember that these are adult women that we're talking about. We're not talking about children. And where's the power lying when one person loses his job, another person gets a Guardian column or the front page story but on the But if they have committed, a, they have committed a wrongdoing, then shouldn't they lose their job? But, but they haven't been found guilty. This is an accusation that's been made and right. they've lost their job on the basis of an accusation without having been found guilty of anything. Just finally, very, very briefly, um, uh, the people that have been accused and some of them suspended from Labour, mm -hmm. the investigations have gone quiet. Have you had any idea about when we are going to hear um, if they've been resolved? Uh, I think that the investigation is trying to be, because it's all being redesigned, every political party is redesigning, so it, it shouldn't be too long and they're right. trying to do it in a timely manner.